What's up, YouTube? It is your boy JB, and we are here today with a review for Love at the Lockup. This is season three. This is episode 37, and it's titled Freak, a Freak in the Sheets. All right, you guys. So um, it's starting to rain here in, in, in um, my, you know, my hometown. It's starting to rain, so you guys may hear rain or you may not. Right now, it's kind of sprinkling, so it's not coming down heavily. But um, before we actually get into this review, if you guys are watching this video or any of the other videos on the channel and you guys are not already subscribed to the channel, then um, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, you guys. Now, with that all being said, um, let's, without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about life after lock. I mean, love after lock. Interesting episode. Let's discuss it. All right, you guys, let's talk about Rachel and Doug real quick. Rachel and Doug, that is a whole interesting situation, right? So it is literally one day before Doug gets out of jail. So we see Rachel. Rachel's on the phone with you know like whoever she's you know his um I guess his parole officer or whoever she's on the phone with them right, and she's getting Doug's stipulations about you know when he can be out, how long he can be out, and stuff like that right. So then we see her as she's packing up that non-alcoholic beer, that that deli style bologna package. I was like, ugh, who? Ugh. Why would somebody want some bologna? Like, of all things, why would you want bologna? But whatever. So then Doug calls, um, 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 he calls her up, right? So Amber, not Amber, Rachel tells Doug what his stipulations are, right? So Doug can be out Monday through Friday, right? Between the hours of 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. When my cousin got out of jail, that was kind of like his, well, he couldn't, he could be out on the weekends, but he had, you know, he was out from 8 a.m. till 6. I think he was out from, he, he had a full 12 hours that he could be, nope, he had to be home by 7 o'clock at night, because he could be out from 8 to 7, so yeah, but he did, he stayed home on the weekends at my grandmother's house, I don't know if he couldn't go out on the weekends or not, but his, stip, his stipulations were similar to the, um, you know, Doug's, he had to take his drug test and all that stuff, he had to see his probation officer, parole officer, a lot like he had he had actually actually when he first got out he had to see that um parole officer every day throughout the week and i thought you know he asked me at one point can i take him i'm like look here dude this is a lot you gotta i, I get it you out of jail you gotta do the right thing to stay out of jail but dude i'm not this ain't my you know i can't do this for you but after that he said he'll walk i'm like that's fine because it's right down the, it's literally down the street from the house you can do that so Doug is upset, right? Doug wants to get him a, get get a new um you know a, a new case manager or whatever. Like, dude, you're the one that did the crime, so you gotta. I mean, yes, you're out of prison, but you're technically still not free. Free. You're not gonna be free until you off of parole, and then even then, you still gotta live. You know, you still gotta be careful about the things that you do because one little slip up and you can end up right back in prison. Trust me, I know that one too because I have an uncle that's back in prison. Like I said, I feel like that nigga, I really do feel like that nigga had a boyfriend down there that he missed so badly because he was in jail my entire child. He was in jail before I was even born. Or, or you know, yep, no, no, no. He went after I was born. I was born in 1989. He didn't get out until I was 20. He was in prison for 24 years. And now he's back in jail for another 40 years. What a dumbass. A dumbass. So, yeah, Doug wants to switch his um, switch. I'm like, okay, good luck with that one. So, then we see Rachel the next day. She's getting ready to go pick up Doug, right? And Rachel is dressed like a Stepford wife. So, she said, this is what Doug wanted me to wear. I'm like, girl, really? And you still don't see that this man is controlling you? Like, you still don't see it. I mean, you just, at this at this point, Rachel is just painting the red flags blue purple green like girl there are so many red flags and you just painting these flags a different color but okay yeah so she's dressed like a step of white and he and he wanted her not to wear any panties i'm like once again rachel that is what controlling so doug's whole thing when they got when she got out of when he got out of prison doug's whole thing is he wants to have sex with rachel i'm like girl you just you don't realize it right do you realize that you are just another uh, just a warm hole for him to you know um you know dip off into I, I just don't get it 
So when she gets out, you know, he lifts her. You know, she runs up to him. He runs up to her. He grabs her. She's like, um, Doug, be careful. You know, I ain't got no panties on. And then, you know, um, like I said, it's, it's really more so about sex for them, with him. So after that, um, what's next? That baloney looked nasty as hell. I'm just going to keep it real with you about that one. That baloney looked absolutely disgusting. Can't put this in any other way, but that baloney looked nasty. Um, let's move on. All right, you guys. Next up, let's talk about. Mm, we're gonna leave him for last. We're gonna leave him for last. Let's talk about Courtney and um Josh real quick. So you guys remember the last episode, right? That Courtney and Josh, he got out of prison. You know, Josh. Here's 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 the interesting thing with Josh and with um. It's Josh and it's Doug. Josh and Doug have been in prison for a very long time. Josh and Doug, they were basically kids going into prison. So you guys remember what Josh has been in prison since he was a teenager. So Josh and um and uh Courtney, they had sex, right? They both said that the sex was good. Here's my thing with Josh and Courtney. You guys remember I said it in the last review, like the dogs. Those dogs were in the room with them in the bed. At, I'm, I'm like, oh my god! I'm like, please tell me I did not have sex with the dogs in the room with y'all. Like, I don't understand. You know, people who have animals. Ask me if anybody out there that subscribes to my channel, you guys have animals, and you guys are either married or you, you know, you have people that you know you're dating and you have sex. Do you have sex with your animals in the room with you? Like that would just be uncomfortable to me when. You have a cat, a dog, and y'all have you have you in the throes of having sex, and your animal is just sitting there looking at you have sex. That's just weird to me. That would just, I mean, and then if you turn the lights off, you know that you can see they love you can see their eyes. Absolutely not. I, I just couldn't. It wouldn't be me. Cause that's what that's all I could think about in this entire scene was like the fact that damn, those dogs are in there. Did those dogs literally watch you to have sex? Then after they had sex, they went and had um, a steak. And she's like, how do you like your steak done? He says, well done. She's like, you might as well eat a hockey puck. You know, when it comes to the steak, whole, the whole thing about how do people eat their steaks, why do people care so much? You know what I'm saying? If you, you cook your steak the way you want to cook it, and you let that person eat their steak the way that they want to eat it. Like, some people don't want to see any any pink with their meat. Like, some people don't want to see any pink with their meat. So, there's some, <laughs> so there are some people that are walking by you guys, and they noticed that I was um, recording. There are people walking by in my car, and they're looking at me. But I think that the woman, she was pointing, she was pointing, talking about the fact that I'm recording. <laughs> it's hilarious. I don't know how Rox does it. I don't know how Erica does it. I don't know how anybody who films in their car do it, because people will literally think you're crazy. When I see you talking, but I'm talking to the camera. I'm talking to you guys, to my peoples. Um, actually, before we talk about that, let's talk about that. You guys, I need I need a name for you guys. Do you guys let me know what you guys want to be called? Let me know. I can't wait till I get my community tab so I can actually put that in the community tab for y'all to let me know. Like I, I gave y'all two ideas. Romans, the B squad, whatever. Let me know what y'all think. Um, um, um. So yeah, then they went to cook the steak. Then this is where I really got really creeped out. Ugh. It was once again the dogs. Because while Doug and... Uh, not Doug. Josh and Courtney, while they were eating their food, the dogs were right there beside them. I'm like, oh, God, no. No, I love dogs. Don't get me wrong. I love animals. Like, I got a... I, we have one in my family. Her name is Charlie. I love her to death. One... Charlie knows not to go in the kitchen. That's her, she knows better than when we're, when anybody's cooking. She knows better than to go in the kitchen. She knows better than to go in the kitchen. Now you know if we feed her, you know when she gets fed, yes, her bowl and her water. She knows where that is, and she she knows better. She knows better than to go in the kitchen. She does know that. And sometimes you know she she will. I will say she will come up to me, 
Like if I have food, she'll come up to me and look at me and I'm like, you are not hungry. And then, you know, like, especially if I have a bone, she wants the bone. But the thing is, she gets sick from the bone. I'm like, I'm not giving you a bone because every time I give you a, give you a bone, you get sick. So no, ma'am. So, I mean, I get dogs, you know, want to come and sit by you, but, she, you know, but while you're, I mean, actually, she doesn't do that too often. She's not, she doesn't do that too often where she'll come and sit by you when you're eating. She'll wait for you to finish eating and then she'll come sit by you. But th- those dogs, and especially that little one, it kept jumping, it kept jumping, it kept jumping. No, absolutely not. That's why I don't do potlucks. I don't do potlucks whatsoever. I am not a potluck person. Unless you bring something store-bought, like a store-bought cake, you know, some um, store-bought sweets, um, a store-bought, you know, some canned sodas, a bottle soda, anything that is bought from the store. If you bring in that, I'll do it. But other than that, absolutely not. Because I don't know people's houses. And if this goddamn charger backs up into my car, we're going to have a problem. Let's move on. All right, you guys. Um, Who have we talked about? So we talked about Rachel and Doug and Courtney and Josh. So let's go on ahead and talk about Brittany and Ray, right? Brittany! What that wig go, boo? The wig is a no. Oh, the wing is a no. So it is the day of, uh, it's time for Ray to be released from prison, right? So we see Brittany, she getting herself ready to go pick up Ray from jail. And Brittany tells her, tells us that, you know, when she get when Ray gets out of prison, she wants for them to always be in contact with each other. That ain't gonna happen. Good luck with that one. Oh, I bought him a phone. And, you know, <laughs> the phone had, you know, his passcode is the same as my passcode. So, it, you know, if, if he talk, so, you know, um, if I want to go through his phone, I can do that. Think again, he's a man. He's he's a man, he's human. Like, you don't think that about it. You don't think with you give him that goddamn cell phone and you tell him what the passcode is on that on that phone. He asks you, baby, what's the passcode? Oh, it's da 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 da. It's um so it, I'm assuming it's an iPhone. So you got so with the iPhone you can either have a four digit passcode or a six digit passcode. So let's just say the passcode is um zero nine one nine or 194007 those are those are you know stuff like that 1940194007 like um let's say it's you know uh 0218 or 021889 something like that whatever it is you don't think that that man is going to go into the phone, find the, go to the settings, and say, you know what? She done put a passcode in this phone. She thinks she's slick. What she's trying to do is trying to see who the hell I'm talking to. So if I go to sleep at night, she's going to get the phone, put in the passcode, boom. She's going to see who I'm talking to. Absolutely not. So what is Ray going to do? Ray is going to take that passcode that you had, change that passcode to a code that you don't know. Brittany girl, you gotta play the you, you stupid as hell. And then you said you got caught with his social media that you went through his social media and as he asked it why he asked you why did it say that he was in Spring, Texas? Oh <laughs> I got caught. Girl, you dumb. You are seriously dumb. But see that's my whole thing when it comes to when it comes to people who do that kind of stuff. Like I've never ever been I've never been that type to do that you know want to go through someone's phone that i'm dating or talk or in a relationship with i've never been that type of you know like if you want to if you're gonna cheat you're gonna cheat and if i find out it's a wrap you know what i'm saying but i'm not gonna sit here and be like let me go through your phone let me see your text messages let me see what's in your camera roll let me see this let me see that no i don't need to see it if like i said if you if you want if you feel that you need to talk to somebody else that ain't me Go be with that person. If you feel like the grass is greener on the other side, baby, have at it. So then, so then we find out that Brittany, she's going to go meet up with Ray's family, right? So Brittany, I don't know why Brittany had this whole perception that Ray 
lived in the hood or whatever. But when she pulled up to now the house, I will say the house was nice. The house actually looked better than her parents' house. Just being honest with you guys. So um, she meets Ray's family. So she meets his stepmother and his father, Ray Senior, and she met Ray's step grandmother. And um, you know, she bought them these ugly ass T-shirts talking about "Welcome Home." Okay, whatever, Ray. I mean, uh, Brittany. So then, um, Brittany, you know, she tells them, oh, I got the rental car. So the daddy said that, they said, well, you know, he doesn't like people to drive him around. Well, that means he can sit his motherfucking ass here. Like the fuck? I, I hate when people say that. Oh, I don't like people driving me around. Well, then you're not driving, like, they'd be like, uh, you know, because I've actually had somebody say that to me once before. Oh, I don't like people driving me around. Well, you're not driving my car. I don't, you're not driving my car. I don't know you. Well, I do know you, but at the end of the day, you ain't driving my shit. The fuck? The fuck out of here. Either you want to go or you don't. It's one of the two. It ain't no if, ands, or buts. It's not no if, ands, or buts, or in-betweens with it. This is my car. My car. My name is on it. You don't have to hop in my car. You don't have to hop in it. If you don't like the way that I drive... You can Uber, you can take a bus, you can get a taxi. There are many a ways that you can get around. But what you won't do is drive my shit without, you know, you won't drive my shit unless I ask you to drive my shit, period. So, Brittany originally had her own plans with picking up Ray. We all know what her plans included, having sex with Ray. But his dad felt some type of way, you know, about his son getting out. So he's like, you know what? I want to go pick up my son, which understandable. The grandma. The grandma is the voice of reason with this situation. Because she asked Brittany flat out, girl, what is wrong with you that you had to go pick up a man in prison? I'm like, amen, hallelujah. Speak a word. Speak a word. What is wrong with you that you had to go pick up a man in prison? Girl. So then they go pick up um, Ray. And when they picked Ray up, they dropped him off at a um, gas station, right? They go inside and then they come back out and put him in a different van. We don't know what's going on, so we'll see it in the next episode. But let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys. Next, let's talk about Stanley's Bornack, right? So Stanley's Bornack, he got um, it's him and his, you know, one of his friends come over and he got them damn wig heads, them wig heads, right? Damn, she running faster than hell. Um, so yeah, he got them damn wig heads on and you know, his friends asking him like, you know, what's going on? He's like, Oh, well, you know, since, um, Lisa lost, you know, since, um, you know, she ain't, we all know she said she ain't got no hair, right? That she looks like a boy. So he wants her to look her best. I'm like, well, alrighty then Stanley's born act. If you guys don't get the um, reference, Stanley's born act, go check out the golden girls. Great show. So then Lisa calls him, right? And she asked him about, you know, she he asked about her brother. <laughs> With her brother, they had to put down 10 spikes to stop his ass. I'm like, well, damn. No wonder that bill is $30,000. And at this point now, Lisa's like, well, you know what? He maybe needs to sit in jail and sober up. You think? You think? So, um, Lisa. I forgot to mention this in last week's episode that Lisa said that she's been in jail seven different times. Girl, that's what I keep saying. That's what, like I just said about my uncle. My uncle is back in prison again for 40 years. He gonna die in prison, actually. I'm not being, I'm not saying it to be funny. Literally, he's gonna die in prison because my uncle is in his, he's in his, wait, he's, he's in his late 40s, early 50s. He's late 40. He's in his late 40s, I believe. And he got another 40 years in prison. So, yeah, more than likely, my uncle's going to die in prison unless he gets sick and, and they just let him go. But more than likely, he's going to die in prison. Unfortunately. And he's in jail behind... He's in jail behind one of his, ba- his baby... Well, his, one of his baby mamas that he should have never been living with. They got into a fight. Dumbass. Never liked the woman to begin with. Never liked her. That's neither here nor there. But like I said, 
you back in jail for seven you've been in and out of jail seven different times that's what i keep saying these people are leaving somebody in prison that they loved because <laughs> you can't tell me that it's got to be some puss or some dick in jail for these men and women to keep going back to jail more than once i, I just don't understand it why what is it about jail that y'all love so much so on top of that she's married and she believes she's married to two men how is that i don't know how i, I mean even when stanley bornack explained it it still made no sense to me so i was just like okay again it makes no sense to someone listening to it so i'm guessing she so i think what it was was one guy she thought she she didn't marry him but i guess she thought she divorced him i don't know i don't know but the friend is stanley listen to your friends because your friend is telling you the real deal holy feels you know type of stuff you might be getting played my dude like you might be getting played by lisa and her ex her husband like she might be like oh you know what let me um reach out to this man and let me try to get as much money as i can say hey i'm trying to get a divorce but i'm really not trying to get a divorce we're just pocketing this money santa's an idiot but i guess you know what can you expect from a man who has a a ferret on his head that it, first of all that 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 hair is either that hair is fake either that is a, a bad to pay or that is a terrible dye job one of the two i can't figure out which one it is i literally can't tell you guys which one it is i don't know if it's a terrible dye job or if it's just a really bad to pay and it could be a combination of both it could be a toupee with a terrible that the hair was just dyed a, a terrible shade of black because that is not a normal that is not normal black hair like literally that is not normal black that is too black like i mean it ain't even the color of my beard that black is just atrocious to say the least so um then we see stan as he goes and picks up lisa right you know they talk his friend was talking about what stan has he has a nice house he has nice cars you know he's talking about a mustang but when stan was driving that mustang i kept looking at him like that is a base model mustang that is not a art that is not a rt that's that's not that that's not a hellcat that is a base model ass mustang because when he was driving you know when you drive a mustang that has horsepower you hear it stanley's mustang just was like it didn't have anything behind it so i think stanley might be putting on a little bit to you know putting on airs my personal opinion but um, let's move on to wrap the episode. I think we're about to wrap the episode up. Let me let me double check you guys. So we've discussed Rachel and Doug. We've discussed Brittany and Ray. Courtney and Josh. So yeah, we're going to wrap the episode up with Deontay and Nicole. All right, you guys. Deontay and Nicole. If stupid was a person, you would see Deontay's name next face right next to it with that, that creepy ass smile. Dude, you are a dumbass. The your last girlfriend played you for your last girlfriend played you, right? Nicole is playing you too. I don't understand how the fuck Deontay don't see this shit. Even Stevie Wonder, Ray Charles, Helen Keller. Was Helen Keller blind? Or is she deaf? Well anybody anybody with eyes anybody with logical sense can see that nicole is using you so on top of deontay giving nicole that thousand dollars that's in her you know in her in a in a, in a uh, you know a bra you know she takes it she changes her clothes and she takes the twin the the thousand dollars out of her bra deontay over there sniffing and i'm like dude you sniffing titty sweat like titty sweat you know that's titty sweat that you sniffing you're sniffing titty sweat okay so then he tells her look in the back seat i got more stuff for you so she says you did oh my god he's like yeah baby money and an option for you deontay how fucking dumb are you how fucking dumb do you think we are 
you sat there in the first damn episode and told us you don't like people who are what? Materialistic. What is this shit that you giving her? Material items, nigga. You just gave her a thousand dollars, which I don't believe that was a whole thousand dollars, but you know, we gonna play along with it. Then you got her some shit from Victoria's Secret. You got her a cell phone. What does that say? What does that scream? Money. Materialistic. Use a lie. A lie don't care who tells it. So she starts taking everything out. She's like, oh, lingerie. What is this for? Girl, what the fuck you think the lingerie is for? It's for you to wear. It's for you to wear at night before you guys have sex. And girl, if you hit this car, that BMW will be mine. Although it's red and I don't do red, but I'm just letting you know that if you hit this car. But yeah, she's like, oh my God, what do you, what, what is this for? So she, then she says, you know, it's for you to wear for me, you know, so I can, you know, so we can feel on, you know, feel on each, you know, feel each other out and stuff like that. Oh no, Deontay, that's not going to work. I was like, oh, okay. You know, everybody else, everybody else is getting out of prison. They're ready to have sex. Stan and Lisa ready to have sex. Stan and Lisa ready to get that, you know, get it on and popping like a semi-automatic. Um, Josh and Courtney got it on and popping. Um, this girl hit my car. I'm going to pop her. Stan and Lisa ready to get it popping. Courtney and Josh got it popping. Um, Brittany and Ray. Well, Brittany wants to get it popping. We don't know about Ray. We ain't even heard a, a lick from Ray yet. Um, Nicole, Rachel and, um, Rachel and her man, Doug, ready to get it popping. Like, you know... Everybody ready to get it popping like a semi-automatic in this piece. Not Nicole. Nicole is not ready to get it popping. Nicole says that she is very uncomfortable. You know, we can touch each other in prison, girl. A lie, uh, once again, a lie don't care who tells it. Y'all have sex in prison. Y'all, t- if you ain't having sex with somebody else, you touching yourself. Like, you can't sit there and tell me, you know, I really want, I, I mean... I'm pretty positive. If you didn't touch somebody, you touched yourself. So she's very uncomfortable. Now, mind you, Deontay said he ain't had sex in a year and a half. Okay, whatever. Ugh, that tor- You're going to be having sex with that torso for a little bit longer. And Deontay believes her thinking that she hasn't touched anyone or talked to anyone in the, la- in the last year and a half. I'm like, dude, you's a dumbass. You's a fool. That girl is playing you. She's 23 years old. You really believe that someone that is 23 was not talking to someone else besides you? And you really believe that someone that is 23, that is the prime for... Uh, man, I can't even tell y'all how much sex I had at 23. I was a horny 23-year-old. The horniest. Anytime, at any, you know you know how it is when you get them late night texts? What you doing? You know what that means. It's time to do What? have sex and that's exactly what would happen anytime someone said you know anytime i wake up and i see that what you doing text at one two three in the morning any time between any time between midnight and seven six a.m before the sun comes up you know what that means let's get it in so for him to sit here and say you know he believes her he literally believes that she doesn't want to be touched dude she was a lie she does she just doesn't want you to touch her that's what that shit is so then they pull up to nicole's mama's house right so she's like you know um i'm on the fence i'm I don't, i'm not sure i want to stay with you tonight you know you don't want to stay with him because you got somebody else that you want to see like play somebody play checkers and not me like you, you stop playing me don't play with me don't play with me baby so he says you know so she's so she's staying at her mom's house right he says oh i want to meet your mom she says oh no 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 I was like, wait a minute. That was kind of, a, that was a bit of a red flag when she said no to him meeting her mom. I was like, really? Because at that point, I was like, is it really her mom? But then when we saw her mother, I'm like, okay, so it is her mom. Then I was like, why does she want him to meet her in this exact moment? Like, that didn't make sense to me. So then we see Nicole later in the episode. Well, actually, in the same scene, she's in her room and she's texting somebody, talking about she just got out and they're trying to figure out when they're going to see each other. I'm like, see. She's playing a game. Either she got another dude or she got another woman. One of the two. Like I said, I you couldn't pay me to believe a 23-year-old girl just got fresh out of prison. 
You think you mean to think you mean to tell me she doesn't want to get some either she don't want no dick or no puss? Like girl, use line, use capping, as the kids say. Capping. It took me a long time to realize what capping meant. That's I realize I'm getting older when I don't know these these terms that these kids are using. And then I'm saying kids. Oh my god. And I'm just about to be 32. But yeah, you guys, that was um Life Love Apple Lockup. Good episode. Obviously so, because you guys have a long review. Um, so that's it, you guys. Be sure to like this video. Please leave your comments in the comment section below. And subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell button. And also, you guys, stay safe out there. Please take care of yourselves. Wash your hands, you guys. Wear your mask or not, whichever one you guys do. Please be safe in doing so. Be blessed. Social distance, you guys. And I'll catch you guys in the next one, which is going to be ready to love, you guys. So until then, bye, guys.